Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show, your daily dose of guitar information. Let's do some unboxing today. So I'm happy to announce something kind of new that I'm going to do here that I think you guys will like. Unboxing products from companies who are willing to do giveaways. This time Kahaya sent me something. In order to be entered into this giveaway, you have to be within the continental USA. And all you have to do is leave a comment. And let's make it a real comment and end it US. So I know you have a US shipping address. But this is a Kahaya gig bag. They sell these things on Amazon. I think when I bought mine, it was like $19.99 or something. Now they're up to like $20 and some cents today. So it comes in that little box. It's all folded up. I'm sure this will flatten out over time. The material, um, it's not as silky as I thought it was gonna feel. It's more like just a woven material. The zipper's a, a little bit tough. It seems to work. That's the thing with those glary gig bags is those zippers always seem to be broken from the factory because they'll like open on both sides. But this one actually seems to be durable enough that you can use it. That's a nice little touch. It's actually branded Kahaya in there. I'm sure you could fit a good amount of stuff in there. So that's nice. You've got a one shock absorber and it's just a single zipper. Oh, that's nice. It has a, uh, you could put this over your neck. I honestly wasn't expecting that feature on such a cheap little gig bag. So let's go ahead and test the fit. I've got this Dan Electro 66 that doesn't have a home. Ooh, that's a very tight fit, but it looks like it does it. And you don't have to use this uh, neck securing thing, but honestly, that's not something I've ever seen in a gig bag before. I don't think it'll do much, but it'll stop your guitar from super sliding around. It's got some padding, but I mean, this is really just a gig bag. I wouldn't really say you could toss it off a roof or anything. Uh, it's got backpack straps. These are nowhere near as cushioned as I thought they were going to be. These are pretty much just as thin as the material themselves. So if you're interested in these, I'll leave a link in the description. I mean, for 20 bucks, I'd be happy with it. I mean, it's not a hard shell case, but it does the job. On to some unboxings. Moving on here, three packages delivered just for me. This is the one we were waiting on last time. It actually ended up taking a full another week because uh, UPS wanted some weird, this is not a chemical form filled out. <laughs> I guess it has to do with uh, composite wood. So I'm not quite sure what would happen if this had a composite wood on it. Let's go ahead and open this thing up because it came all the way from Sweden. And not really sure if this is a box or what's going on here. It appears to be like, kind of like the interior of a box, but just like layered. <laughs> I've unboxed a lot of guitars in my days, guys, but that was probably one of the more difficult ones. There are so many layers of bubble wrap and tape, super protective. And you know, sending things internationally, I think making it very inconvenient for customs to open it kind of helps them go through quicker. Not that there's anything illegal in this case, but it is the coolest Les Paul. My absolute favorite one, at least from the modern era, because there's cool stuff in the 70s, there's cool stuff in the 80s. This has to be my favorite from that 2010 era, the Buckethead Signature Guitar. Now this one kind of has a funny story behind it because the owner of this one reached out to me like eight months ago and they asked me, hey, can I use your video in my ad and uh, some of the elements from your description? It's like, Sure, I, I guess I don't care. But <laughs> what they ended up doing is they ended up copying my entire description with specific information to that guitar, like its weight and everything. So it kind of sat around a while. And I think the key thing is that most buyers for these live in America. And with this thing sitting in Sweden, some people are a little bit leery about buying overseas. They don't know if it's a fake or not, things like that. So that's why usually a lot of these will come overseas for me and then I find a happy buyer. It's interesting how sometimes the pickups will age like this. I'll definitely have to make sure that hasn't been replaced, but I have seen that happen before. But it looks like it arrived safely with no brakes, cracks or repairs. 
Moving on to our next one here. Ah, kind of a small box and I took the shipping labels off of them so I don't remember which one's which. I know we have some kind of cool guitars in this batch. Well, once you see the chainsaw case, you know it's got to be something really nice. Okay, I remember now. I think I was watching uh, the Norm's Rare Guitar Show when Norm kind of does a similar thing as this after he's done at a guitar show, like they're buying halls. And he once said, I pay too much for this. So if you want to pay too much for it too, you can contact me. <laughs> That's kind of uh, the story with this one because I've kind of been doing the whole double cut thing. And I used to, oh, looks like we've got uh, swapped latches on here. That's interesting. But this is one of the more interesting double cuts. That's like one of the earliest ones as well. We're not talking 50s early style, but the 80s. This is called a Spirit 2. There's like Spirit 2, Spirit 1s, and then there's the Spirit XPLs with the Explorer headstocks, which are also really cool. But these guys, they're, they're just kind of interesting guitars. And I had one like when I first started, you know, getting into guitars and I really didn't think too much of it. So I never really bought too many more, but there's been quite a few uh, requests for these but I was actually looking for a very specific one. Unfortunately, this is not the version I was looking for, but hey, we might as well do it anyways. But this fretboard is like really weird looking. It almost looks like walnut. Now we'll go on to this big one. This is a, a side loader, unfortunately. Sometimes what I like to do with these, cause I prefer to be a top loader, I just cut them like this. Then you don't have to use all this tape when you reuse the box. I guess, do you guys see what they did wrong with this pack job? This is, you know, cushioned right against the side of the box. So it's not actually being protected despite, you know, using all this nice cushion air mailer stuff. It wasn't protecting the right side. But I mean, unless it's being chucked off a building and gets mishandled, it probably won't hurt it. People are always talking about how fragile Gibsons are, but ever since I started filming the unboxing of all this stuff. I mean, how many have been broken? I think it was just one, maybe two with like slight damage, but I've never had like a complete headstock snap off. So as long as you take the time to pack them, they're usually going to be okay. Unless, you know, something extreme happens. So what is in this one? Oh yes. I've been wanting one of these. Yeah, definitely Guitar of the Week because I've had a few of the other customs like the 54 styled one. Then there's like the three pickup version. And then this is like the uh, the baby Ace Freely. It doesn't say Ace Freely on it, but Gibson was just being cheeky and not paying Ace any money. <laughs> because I mean, it's got the triple DiMarzios. I think they're what, super distortions or something like that. But it's not a custom shop guitar. It's, you know, made in the USA, but for whatever reason, people still pay, you know, almost custom shop prices for this particular run. Not just for this one, but also like the two P90s, just because they're limited edition and cool. I think it's like 400 of each of them made. So I'm really pumped to do this one because this is a model that's been calling me for a while. And now we don't really have a lot to box up and ship out today, but we do have one significant one and it's my last remaining spotlight special. It's always a sad day when one of these goes away, but I mean, these will forever be my favorite model. I was really sad. Recently, I missed out on a really rare one. Somebody tipped me off to it over on Instagram. I had reached out to Groon's Guitars about it. They never emailed me back. 
And then by the time it was like a week or two later, I just decided to call him about it. I submitted my offer. It was like a consignment piece, but then somebody else bought it. Then they messaged me on Instagram. I was a little bit salty. So it's like, I don't want to help you, but I'll help you anyways. But it was a antique sunburst model with antique natural appointments. So that means it got the brown and cream binding. It had the natural headstock. It had the special tuners that the antique naturals had, but it had the darker antique sunburst finish. There was not very many done up like that. And Groons, I don't think they really understood what they were selling there. But this one going on to a beautiful loving home and I'm sure I'll buy some more of these in the future. I mean, these are my favorite 80s model. You can check out this review for more information on this. Just as a final send off for this one, I think my favorite feature has to be the headstock on this one because it has this wavy wood grain pattern that not all of them have. Turns out there was one more item I was forgetting about. It's the uh, Les Paul Custom Light SG Elite pickups from the late 80s. I kind of had fun with these things. It was a mystery as to what they were, but I eventually solved it after, you know, a little bit of digging in my mind. So they happily found a buyer and I'm guessing they're going to be restoring one of those guitars, which is really cool. So let's get them packed up. So just as I was finished editing up this whole video, this was delivered just like this. But this guitar, it spoke to me. It said, please help me. Now, whether it survived the trip or not, I guess we'll have to find out. It's only three latches and a, a shipping label that was on here. Oh, Dios mio, mi niño. Te has encontrado con un destino terrible, ¿no?